Good morning. It is uh, April 9th, Thursday. I don't know if you've lost track of the days. Um, got a little bit of some coffee with Drew and some Bible reading and uh, just a way to start our day as we uh, prepare for the day, but also as we pray, prepare for Easter. We've been reading through um, Mark's account of uh, the, everything leading up to uh, the crucifixion of Jesus. And so um, today we're in Mark... Um, Mark 14, and uh, we get, the story continues, yesterday we looked at uh, the Last Supper, and then um, Peter denying Jesus, and then uh, going to the garden to pray, and the disciples unable to stay awake, and um, eventually Jesus says, look here, you know, here comes my betrayer, and so that's where we left off yesterday, so in Mark uh, 14, verse 43, it says this says just as he he was speaking, um, Jesus speaking to his disciples, uh, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With with him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Um, so we have this uh, crucial piece to the story where Jesus actually has to be arrested, right? Because without um, Jesus being arrested, uh, they don't, they, they can't just kill him. And the Jewish people, uh, or the, the Jewish leaders were very intent on making sure that Jesus did not survive. But they need... Um, they just have to arrest him. They can't just run out and kill him. And so some interesting things happen here. Um, it talks about one of the uh, disciples pulling a sword. Um, we know from other Gospels, he's not named in Mark's Gospel, but we know from other Gospels that this is Peter. Um, and it's a kind of a Peter thing to do. He um, very often wanted... Um, he thought he knew what he was doing. As we already see, as we already see in the um the passion narrative we see peter saying things that he then um does the opposite of he's very um he's got a lot of gumption he he tries to do the right thing at least by what he thinks but um you know he pulls out a sword and he's trying he's clearly trying to kill somebody here and i think because he's a fisherman and not a swordsman <laughs> he cuts off um, a guy's ear, one of the servants there, and then in another gospel, Jesus even um, heals it, puts the ear right back on, um, and we get to see a lot of we get to see a lot of Jesus's character throughout this whole narrative, and some of it I think even more so here, um, where we get to see Jesus betrayed by one of the twelve guys who he had spent, you know, some people say three years, some people say three and a half years with. Um, I mean, think about um, a friend of yours or someone you have a relationship with, uh, even just for a short period of time, like three years, who would then betray you. Um, Jesus knew it was coming, but we also know that he was man and, uh, and God. And so it can't be an easy thing um, to endure. And so Judas kisses him. Uh, but then he, um, one of the things I love about Jesus is that he's always, he's got an answer or he's got some sort of statement where he can use uh, what's going on around him to make a point. And so he just says, am I leading a rebellion? Like, have I come at you, I'm speaking to the religious leaders, have I come at you at all? Or have you not seen me sitting in plain sight in front of other people teaching every day, that, but now you have to come under the cover of darkness to arrest me. Um, you know, there's no response to that, but it's very clear that, um, 
not only because it needed the scripture needed to be fulfilled, but he's also just making this point and showing how the showing how the religious leaders just they they weren't in tune with uh, God. They were just looking for the power. They were looking for um, the the ability to lead people, um, or maybe dictate to people. So he's arrested. Uh, we even have one of the disciples. Uh, some commentators think that this is Mark the very end who um, in 51 it says a young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus when they seized him he fled naked leaving his garment behind almost that he was so scared of the situation um, his clothes fell off and he did not care and he just kept running Um, again some commentators think it's Mark Uh, this is the only place in the gospels that this line is even at but sort of interesting nonetheless I think Um, so then in verse 53 they took him to the high priest and all the chief priests, elders, and teachers of the law that came together. Peter followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple, and in three days will build another, not made by man. Yet even then their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, "Are Are you not going to answer? What is the testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy, and the guards took him and beat him. So we have this kangaroo court where the religious leaders actually didn't have really good um, authority, they didn't have good witnesses, they didn't have good testimony to why they could arrest Jesus and uh, sentence him to death. And one of the pieces that hangs over this, and we'll see it um, tomorrow as we read through the the next piece of the story is that the Jewish leaders couldn't, the Romans did not give the Jewish people um, capital punishment authority. They allowed the, the Jewish people to sort of self-govern as long as they paid their taxes and as long as they didn't riot. Um, and so when it comes to the scene, they're trying to get him to do something or say something so that they can say, look, Rome, this is why we need this man killed. Um, and so he finally gives them enough he, despite all of their lies and all of their um, their stories that are not working out, not corroborating each other. Um, but again, we, we get to see the we get to see the character and the nature of Jesus, right? For me, even if I'm in a room full of people who um, disagreed with me, if my life is on the line, if I'm honest, I probably start arguing. I probably start fighting back, um, and that's just me as a human. If I were um, if I were Jesus who just put a man's ear back on, who has more power, who is the son of God, who is part God, right? I, we, this just shows who the kind of man he was because it would have been super easy for him to get himself out of the situation. It would have been super easy for him to just tell them, no, I am right and I'm walking out of here. But that's not what he does. And even to the point as they ratchet up the um, humiliation and the um, pain, you know, there at the end it says then they they, uh, began to spit on him, they blindfolded him, they struck him with their fist and said, prophesy, you know, uh, this is the beginning. This is the beginning of the the brutality of um, Jesus' death. But all throughout it, he doesn't. He doesn't fight back. Um, he shows us what it means to love those around us in a really, um, 
really difficult way, right? I think um, for a lot of us, myself included, I'm, I, I can be ready to fight, but sometimes, um, or maybe most of the time, maybe that shouldn't be our inkling. Um, we see that here with Jesus pretty, pretty apparently. And so the, the last piece of the section that we're going to read this morning in, in verse 66 of, of um, Mark 14 says this. It says, while Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, You are, from, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time, then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. So Peter's not having a great um, series of events in the midst of this, which um, I think on the one hand, us sitting here being able to read it, um, I think we could maybe throw some stones. Um, I think also that if we had our lives written out and people a thousand years later looked at our lives, they probably would throw stones at us as well. Um, this is not an easy situation. Uh, we can look back and go, but Peter, you were with Jesus. This is, <laughs> this is the guy. Like, no sense in denying it, you know. And if you die, you die, right? Um, but Peter was a real man. This isn't just some character in a book. And um, as we've seen in the midst of even this, um, this crazy crisis we're in the midst of, people are fearful of dying. Uh, in some ways, I am. You know, um, we, it, is a, it is our nature as humans to not want to endure pain, endure harm, um, or die. And so Peter here rightly knows that if he stands up and says... Yeah, I was with him. There's a good chance he's arrested and maybe crucified as well. At the very least, beaten. And uh, so he denies him. But then we have this prophecy that, that Jesus kind of told him what would happen. And, you know, we remember that, that Peter said, No, Lord, if everybody falls away, if everybody um, runs and scatters, you got me. I will be with you, you and me, Jesus, till the end. And... Um, Unfortunately, uh, that's that's not how it plays out. Um, and so I think for us, as we read this passage, I, I think one we're the we're progressing in the story of uh, of what leads Jesus um, to the cross. I think we get to see a couple of things. One, as I've talked about, we get to see the nature and the character of who Jesus is. I mean, the things that we see just in these verses. Um, they're they're not normal in humans, and it gives us this perspective of who um, who we can be as followers of Jesus, as well as um, who our Savior was, um, one who uh, didn't fight back when he could have. Um, we also get to see and maybe just extend some grace, uh, both uh, to Peter and maybe to ourselves. You know, we, we have a lot of good intentions. Um, Peter had great intentions. I mean, to the point that he drew a sword and started swinging it, and he didn't even know really what he was doing, it, it appears. Um, but we have good intentions, too. And um, maybe we need to give grace to Peter, but maybe we need to give grace to ourselves as well. Because um, we may not always do it right. We may not always get it right. Um, but that is not a reason for us to beat ourselves down. Um, the beauty of Peter is that he does all of these knuckleheaded things and Jesus still looks at him 
after all of this is over, after Jesus is resurrected, he looks at him and says, I'm going to build my church on you. You are a rock. And so for some of us, maybe we just need to hear that today. Maybe we need to hear that, um, you know, we may take some missteps. We may, um, we may not always do it right. I mean, we need to be, that doesn't, that's not an excuse for sin. That's not an excuse uh, for not following Jesus. Um, but I know there's some of us who, when we don't get it right, we beat ourselves up pretty bad. And so maybe today that's just what, what you need to hear, that um, because of what ends up happening with Peter and the example of Peter here, um, just give yourself some grace today. You know, particularly in this season when we, <laughs> when everything feels stressful, um, whether it be, I mean, last night we're watching uh, here in Troy, Ohio, those thunderstorms that rolled through. Um, and my daughters are not big fans of tornado watches, you know, but all of a sudden watching TV became stressful last night and we're in the middle of a crisis. So there's already stress. And then, you know, the weather's going to change. It's just all crazy. And so, um, maybe just through this period of time, maybe just give yourself a little extra grace. Don't, don't take advantage of it, but you know, don't do the things that you know you're not supposed to, but you know, maybe... Maybe you need to see yourself with uh, the eyes that um, Jesus saw saw Peter with. So uh, tomorrow morning, Good Friday, um, 8 a.m., we'll be back and we will read through um, the crucifixion and uh, the death and burial of Jesus. It might be slightly longer, but uh, we'll be here at 8 a.m. Um, again, let me, uh, let me pray for us. God, we are thankful that the sun has risen again. We are thankful um, that... You are still in control. God, we are thankful for um, the health and uh, the blessings in our lives. Um, God, we ask that as we continue to sort of meditate and think through all of this as we as we are led to Easter, God, I pray that we'll just remember the kind of person Jesus was. Um, help that uh, affect who we are. Help that affect uh, how we interact with uh, the people that we are under quarantine with, the people that we interact with uh, via phone or text, or um, the people we see um, at the store, whatever the case may be. Would you help um, our lives look more like your sons? And God, I also ask that you would just help us give ourselves, and we would ask for your, your grace and mercy during this time, as sometimes... Some of the stress levels get too high. Um, sometimes our um, the view of ourselves is not the way you look at us. Um, would you just help us to view um, ourselves as you view us? Help us to give grace to others and give grace to ourselves. Um, but again, just helping us to look more like Jesus every day. God, we love you. We ask a blessing over all of this, uh, all of our days, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, for those of you watching live, I hope you have a blessed day um, here in Ohio. Sorry it's going to be cold all of a sudden, but it's Ohio, so what do you do? Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, 8 a.m. Have a good day.